Um, and you can now get started. All right. Well, uh, good, e good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Christopher Wanamaker, the Canal County engineer. Uh, I want to thank you tonight for joining us for this public scoping meeting. The project team and I are very excited to share our current understanding of the project area and to hear and learn more about the project area from you, the key stakeholders, agencies, and the public within this watershed. Now I'm going to pass it over to Christy Shepard, our moderator for the evening, to go over participation details. Thank you, Chris. Participants joining us via their computers on WebEx or through their phones and are currently muted. I'll describe the meeting format and how to participate in just a moment. But first, if you, have, if you are having any technical issues right now, you may need to hang up or log off, then redial or reconnect. If that does not work, please contact WebEx Help at 866-229-3239. Again, that number is 866-229-3239. And we actually are having a little bit of technical difficulty, so we're just gonna take a pause really quick um, to help our Spanish interpreter catch up for just a moment. Ariella, can you hear us? Sorry, folks, we'll just pause for just a moment. Okay, sorry about that, folks. It looks like we were having a little bit of technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, but we're looking forward to your comments and questions. After the presentation, we'll describe and display instructions for asking a question or making a comment. Keep in mind that after this meeting, you can continue to ask questions or provide comments at any time through May 14th by visiting the study website at bit.ly backslash guild dash wash. That's B-I-T dot L-Y backslash G-U-I-L-D dash W-A-S-H. The format for tonight is a short presentation, then the remainder of the meeting will be open for comments and questions. Please note that this event is being recorded and will be posted to Pinal County's YouTube channel within two weeks. Links to the video recording will be provided on the study webpage. All right, well, thank you, Christy. Uh, Pinal County is the sponsoring local agency for this project. Uh, the United States Department of Ag Agriculture slash the Natural Resources Conservation Service, or the NRCS, is the lead agency for this watershed plan and environmental assessment for the Guild Wash Santa Cruz River project area. And our engineering and environmental consultant is HDR Engineering. I'd like to take a moment now to introduce key staff from both the NRCS and HDR 
that will all play a very important role in the successful completion of this project. First, I'll introduce the NRCS staff. We have Mr. Dave Bayman of the NRCS Phoenix office. He is the state conservation engineer. He will direct the NRCS staff throughout the project. We also have Mr. Todd Solemn, who's also with the NRCS Phoenix office. He's the state environmental coordinator. Mr. Solemn's role is to work closely with the sponsor and consultant team as the project navigates the various environmental resources within the project area. We also have Mr. Ken Gishi, who is an NRCS state rangeland management specialist who will work with the project team to better understand the watershed uh, watershed health as it relates to issues such as plant and animal habitat and other land use concerns. And we also have Mr. Ralph Go, who is a civil engineer with the USDA NRCS out of the Flagstaff office. He will work with the team to identify conservation practices that are needed in regard to resource concerns within the watershed. And finally, we have Mr. Tom Reese, who is the NRCS landscape coordinator out of the Tucson office. All right, so as I mentioned, HDR engineering is the design consultant for this project. HDR's team includes Mr. Alex Coronel, who is the project manager. He will manage the internal execution of the project, including office and field work and oversee the project deliverables. Alex will work closely with Pinal County and the NRCS to facilitate uh, coordination and to assure proper staff allocation and manage the project schedule. We have Mr. Lou Masalik, who is the project environmental manager. He brings a long history of environmental resource assessment and, invent and environmental document uh, preparation uh, to the project. We have Ms. Marsha Miller and Christy Shepard, who will lead the project's communications efforts to assure not only the effective dissemination of project information, but also the efficient and effective collection of information from the community. All, the, uh, all of the team members on this call will be available during the comment and question portion of the meeting. I'll now hand the presentation over to Alex with HDR, who will provide an overview of the project, the NRCS planning process, and highlight the project scoping phase and what we need from you as project stakeholders. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> Presented on this slide is a map of the Guildwash Santa Cruz River watershed. The watershed has a total area of 97,000 acres or approximately 152 square miles. Approximately 84 square miles of the watershed is contained within Pima County. The Santa Cruz River flows northwesterly through the watershed, west of I-10, through the communities of Rito and the town of Marana. There are several washes that originate in the Tortolita Mountains and flow from east to west across the watershed, where they drain into the Santa Cruz River. There are three major man-made features that cross uh, roughly from north to south across the watershed, including the Bureau of Reclamation Central Arizona Project Canal, uh, Interstate 10, and the Union Pacific Railroad. This map shows land ownership within the watershed. The largest percentage of land ownership within the watershed consists of private land, followed by several large areas of state trust land ownership. As you can see from this figure, there are some pockets of land owned by the Bureau of, Rep uh, Bureau of Land Management, as well as an area along the Central Arizona Project Canal that is owned by the Bureau of Reclamation. This map shows land use within the watershed. East of I-10, land use is primarily undeveloped desert rangeland, meaning that the area has been mainly untouched and it's in its native undisturbed state. There are sparse groupings of very low density residential development in the Pinal County side. The most prominent development on the Pima County side is the Dove Mountain Resort and residential areas, 
within the south central area of the watershed. Both east and west along the I-10 corridor includes a mix of commercial, agricultural, and residential development. The town of Marana is the largest urban area within the watershed, with a mixture of residential, agricultural, and industrial land use. The remaining areas west of I-10, towards and including the Santa Cruz River floodplain, are primarily agricultural with some commercial and industrial development. A major development within the north central region of the watershed is the Pinal Air Park. That, among other, other general aviation services, serves as a boneyard for inactive civilian and U.S. Air Force aircraft and the Silver Bell Army heliport that serves the Western Army National Aviation Training Site. The project area is located within a region known as the Sun Corridor, one of three metropolitan planning organizations in Arizona. The Sun Corridor is located between Phoenix and Tucson and includes important transportation corridors such as I-10 and the Union Pacific Railroad. This region has been historically prone to flooding, with at least 34 major events recorded since the late 1800s. The most damaging major flood events were weather systems that included the remnants of tropical systems that entered Arizona in 1983, 1993, and 2018. Tropical storm Octave alone had flood damages of over 45 million within this region. Typical flood-related damage includes inundation of homes and businesses, overtopping due to port capacity or capacity loss due to sedimentation, damage to roadway, railroad, canal, and levee embankments, farmland inundation and soil loss, sediment deposition on roads, and damage to infrastructure within the Pinal Air Park. In addition uh, to structure, agricultural, and infrastructure losses described in the previous slide, the watershed has also suffered from resource damages and losses, including bank instability along the Santa Cruz River, erosion along normally dry washes, associated habitat damage and loss, and degraded surface and groundwater quality resulting from soil loss and contamination. Past and ongoing studies have focused on identifying flooding, mapping floodplains, and identifying potential solutions, but none have studied this particular watershed as a whole. The primary purpose of the Guild Wash Watershed Plan EA is to identify, mitigate, and reduce future flooding in the project area for the benefit of residents, homes, and businesses, farmland and agriculture, and existing transportation corridors, the CAP Canal, and other critical infrastructure. Through flood damage mitigation and reduction efforts, other project benefits may include erosion and sediment control, enhanced land use and conservation practices, enhancing and preserving the function of floodplains, potential for improved surface and groundwater quality, and the, present, and the preservation of wildlife habitat. This project will consider the watershed as a whole, not only through hydrologic and hydraulic modeling, but also through careful consideration of environmental resources. This graphic represents the project objectives that will build upon each other to accomplish these project goals. The project will evaluate environmental impacts in compliance with the National Environmental Policy Act, otherwise known as NEPA. Identify measures to avoid, reduce, or mitigate impacts, secure local and federal funding to design and construct flood mitigation reduction projects in the Guild Wash watershed area. And so how will this project team meet these objectives? To meet the project objectives, the project will combine the watershed plan 
and environmental assessment into a single document following the NRCS three-phase, nine-step process. The project will complete phases one and two, resulting in a plan that can be carried forward to future implementation and evaluation, resulting in constructed improvement projects or implemented development standards. As you can see from this graphic, the steps one through four in phase one include identifying problems and opportunities, determining the project objectives, creating an inventory of resources, and analyzing the resource data. An integral component of phase one is soliciting input from stakeholders and the public, and it's the main driver for today's meeting. Phase two includes formulating alternatives, evaluating the alternatives, and making decisions. Now this graphic is shown cyclical on purpose, as the process will not always be linear, but often will involve revising a previous step when more information or a better understanding of resource constraints or opportunities are realized. To date, the project team has collected and reviewed multiple sources of information for existing watershed natural resources, including soils and geology, hydrology and hydraulics, biological resources, water resources, social conditions and demographics, and cultural resources. The team has also completed a comprehensive hydrologic and hydraulic study of the project area to be used as a tool for identifying problem areas and selecting and assessing the effectiveness of potential mitigation solutions. Future project steps will build upon the information gathered from stakeholders and the public, the results of the hydrologic and hydraulic modeling, and the information gathered from the resource assessments to develop and screen a range of mitigation alternatives, and select preferred alternatives for detailed environmental impacts analysis. Similar to phase one, the solicitation of stakeholder and public input will be an important part of this study phase. A critical component of the NRCS planning process is to seek and implement input from key stakeholders and to engage in conversations with other federal agencies. Several key project stakeholders have been contacted, including, among others, multiple departments within both Pinal and Pima County, the Town of Marana, several state departments, including the Arizona Department of Transportation, the Arizona State Land Department, the Arizona Department of Game and Fish, and prominent private entities, including the Pinal Air Park, the Union Pacific Railroad, and El Paso Natural Gas Company. The NRCS is leading the federal consulta consultation process and has contacted agencies, including the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, the United States Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, and, and tribal governments, including the Gila River Indian Community, the Akchin Community, and the Tohono O'odham Community. Input from these agencies and communities will be considered throughout the planning process. So what is scoping? Scoping is when the public input helps inform project development. The public and stakeholders have the opportunity to shape the project early on by helping define resources and other environmental concerns for the development of flood mitigation alternatives in Guild Watch. Public input and comments become part of the official project record. Simply put, 
The scoping process is your chance to actively participate in the process and make your voice heard. So you may be wondering, what can I offer or what do you need from me as part of this process? We want to know and learn about issues and concerns in the watershed. This can include impacts from flooding on agriculture, homes, businesses, transportation, accessibility, and loss of income. Any information or concerns regarding the local environment, including vegetation, wildlife, soil erosion, or other known issues. We want to hear about tribal concerns issues of cultural sensitivity, visual and noise impacts. We want you to be our eyes and ears to help us to understand the project area more fully. Presented on this slide is a project schedule. The project is in its initial phases with the existing conditions data collection and analysis and hydrology and hydraulic analysis to be finalized this spring. It is important that we receive your comments and input by May 14th so that it can help to shape the project progress. The next project phases include finalizing the project purpose and need and identifying alternatives. The input that we receive from you will be an integral part of the execution of this project moving forward. The next presentation to the public will be this winter or early spring of 2022, when preferred alternatives are presented for consideration and comment. The preliminary plan EA will be submitted for Pinal County and NRCS review this winter, with the final plan EA to be completed by next fall. Your input is important to the success of this project. This slide contains various ways in which questions and comments can be submitted, including email, telephone, US Postal Service, and via the project website. Next, Christy will go over instructions on how you can comment or ask questions this evening. Thank you, Alex. Now we'll begin the question and answer portion of the meeting. To verbally make a statement or ask a question, we ask that you please virtually raise your hand. Here's how to do that. For those of you using WebEx through your internet browser, mobile phone app, or your WebEx desktop app, simply follow the instructions on the screen. If you would like to ask your question or make a statement, you can click the raised hand icon. When you are called, the moderator will unmute your mic and allow you to speak. When you are finished, the moderator will mute your line and we ask that you lower your hand by clicking on the raised hand icon again. Again, for those joining us online, all of these WebEx instructions are showing on your screen. If you are join, joining by phone as a call-in participant, press star three if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment. This gives us our hand raise signal. When it's your turn to speak, we'll call on you and your line will be unmuted. When you finish speaking, press star three again to remove the hand raise signal. If you have joined using one of the WebEx web applications, 
You may choose to submit your question or comment in writing using the WebEx Q&A feature. These instructions are displayed on the screen. Remember, if you are joining by phone, press star three if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment. This gives us a hand raise signal, and when it's your turn to speak, we'll call on you and your line will be unmuted. When you have finished speaking, press star three again to remove the hand raise signal. And a reminder, if you are having any technical issues, please contact WebEx Help at 866-229-3239. We will do our best to respond to questions in the order they are received. Please be patient as we may have many questions. If needed, we can extend our meeting time up to 10 minutes to respond to questions. If we still have outstanding questions at that time, we will respond to written questions as a part of the meeting summary and provide to participants via email and post on our study webpage. For those on the phone, you may submit questions or comments by phone or other methods following the meeting. We will now begin answering questions. Mark Johnson, I do see that your hand is raised, so I'm going to go ahead and unmute your line. You are now unmuted. Uh, good evening. My name is Mark Johnson. Uh, I am a retired uh, engineer. Um, I was in the water utility industry for 40 years and have uh, quite a bit of stormwater experience. Um, I live in the Del Webb Dove Mountain subdivision, which is in the Guild Wash watershed. I also am president of the Tortolita Alliance, which is a local environmental land preservation group here in Dove Mountain. And the uh, half of the Tortolita Preserve is actually in the uh, Guild Wash watershed. So I have. Uh, I have a few questions. I'll, I'll go uh, one at a time. First of all, I was just curious as to how this project was instigated or started uh, and how the NRCS uh, became involved. Uh, all the watershed or all the federal watershed uh, studies that I've uh, been involved in uh, were usually uh, handled by the Army Corps of Engineers or FEMA or somebody. But I'm just curious how this gets started. Hey, <clears throat> hey Mark, it's uh, Chris Wanamaker. So yeah, I'd be happy to answer that question. So uh, a little bit of history. Um, so as you probably realize, this watershed is a tributary to the Lower Santa Cruz River uh, as it flows from Pima County through Pinal County and eventually to the Gila River. So about five years ago, the county um, worked with the Corps of Engineers to start a feasibility study for looking to look for flood flooding solutions for the Lower Santa Cruz River. Um, and as that study progressed, uh, what we realized was that a comprehensive regional solution was not really going to be possible, just simply due to the cost and and the monumentous size of, of a project that would mitigate something on an 8,000 square mile plus watershed. So after a couple of years of study, the county, Pinal County realized that in order to have effective uh, flood control and flood mitigation in the Lower Santa Cruz River watershed, we needed to turn our focus to the tributary watersheds. And around that same time, we started having conversations with the NRCS and we were made aware of their, I think it's called the Watershed and Flood Protection Operations Program, WFPO. And, um, and there was a, a bunch of money available from the NRCS and they encouraged us to apply for, for grant funding to do some watershed plans. So that's, that's precisely what we did. About two years ago, we applied for funding for the Green Wash watershed, and this this is the Guild Wash watershed, and uh, and we were successful in getting um, grant funding to to do this watershed plan. We also have 
two other major watershed plans that uh, have been submitted to the NRCS. They've not been awarded. Uh, at least I don't have any uh, confirmation from them that they've been awarded, but uh, this is going to this is a long term effort as part of the county's goals of finding flood control solutions on the lower Santa Cruz River and its tributaries. Um, so that's kind of how it started there. And there's also you may have heard there's a, uh, a group called the Lower Santa Cruz River Alliance, which is a group of uh, was 21 members. Now it's 20 members of different organizations that have kind of come together to say, hey, we need to do something about the Lower Santa Cruz River. This uh, river is a is a major water course uh, through the Pinal County area, and there's a lot of development that's coming uh, in the same area, and we need to plan for it, and we need to make sure that when development comes in, they don't make the problems worse. And so these regional studies will also help with that. It's a little bit of history. I don't know. Hopefully that answered your your question there. Um, yes. Uh, I don't see anybody else with a hand raised, so I will. If if it's okay, I, I had a couple more questions. Sure. Um. So I I recently well moved here to Arizona from Southern California in the uh, Coachella Valley. I worked for the Coachella Valley Water District, and uh, we had a, a really extensive stormwater uh, system. We were the regional stormwater agency mm -hmm. uh, for for the region, um, and a lot of the facilities that uh, we built over time were designed to a much higher standard than the hundred-year storm or hundred-year flood event. Um, fortunately, uh, in two thousand fourteen. Uh, and again, in 2015, uh, there were back to back. 300 uh, year plus monsoonal storm events uh, in La Quinta, California. Uh, it did considerable damage uh, to the. Uh, municipal stormwater systems because. Uh, they were designed to the 100 year standard uh, as most are in the United States. Uh, so they couldn't even get the water into our system, which was designed for the 300 year plus standard. Um, considerable damage. So that's only about uh, 360 miles from here. Uh, it's a desert environment uh, subject to monsoonal rains in the summer, usually in August. Um, of course, we have uh, more monsoonal events here in uh, southern Arizona. So I guess my question is, uh, I guess you've already started the hyd hydrology work. Are you looking at uh, storm frequencies in excess of the 100 year storm? Uh, because I believe because of climate change and so forth, um, we're, we're gonna see storms that uh, go way beyond the 100 year event. It's already happened in California. Yeah, that's a very good question. And um, so I, I believe this project was scoped to look at the 100 year storm situation. I, I don't think it was planned to go any larger unless Alex, did you want to jump in on that? Maybe with future conditions or climate change considerations? Uh, I don't. Hey, Chris, yeah, I can answer that question. So um, yeah, Mr. Johnson, so so far, we have looked at the entire watershed. Uh, we, we ran a, an HEC RAS model, a 2D RAS model, and used HEC HMS to, to develop the, the inflow hydrographs. Um, and we did run 100 year and 500 year models so far. And we did that to kind of bracket the inundation areas. Um, you know, what, what things are actually designed for in the future, that'll kind of be part of the process. And, and they also kind of the economics analysis that goes into the watershed planning a process, but that that's a good question. Okay, oh, thank great. You. Thank I'm you. glad to hear that uh, because, uh, for example, I, I uh, am on a transition team for the subdivision that I live in, which has pretty extensive <laughs> stormwater facilities that nobody even knew about. The, the subdivision is only five years old, 
uh, but I have educated our members here that uh, there are uh, culverts and stormwater channels and retention basins uh, that you need to be uh, aware of and that we need to maintain. Some of it's on private land uh, because you can't have trees growing in the middle of culvert structures uh, if they're going to work effectively. And we, we have, we have found, in our inspections, we have found damage to these facilities. Like I say, it's only five years old. Uh, and I, I don't believe there's been a storm greater than maybe a, at the most a 25 year frequency storm. And already there's you know damage to these facilities. So if we ever get a big one, like we had in La Quinta, California, uh, there's gonna be a lot of damage. Right, yeah, and, and that's that's a good point. And, you know, from, you may have seen earlier in the slides the mention of the 1983 flooding situation. And by some accounts and some records, that was about a 300-year uh, flood event. Um, other records say it was about 100. Um, and, uh, you know, I think as you move upstream into Pima County, it probably does get closer to that 300-year um, storm event, and that was that is the the record or the flood of record for Pinal County, and our floodplain maps for the Santa Cruz River are based upon that flood. Uh, so that is uh, definitely a good point. So I appreciate you bringing that up. So uh, is that for Pinal County or yeah. for Pima County as well? It is for Pinal County. I, I can't speak to the Pima County side. I'm. You know, their, their maps are a lot newer and have been revised probably many times as compared to ours. Um, so I, I don't, I, I think theirs are not based on that flood anymore, that, that historic flood, but I don't know for sure. Okay. Uh, and the last question is, uh, will, will this PowerPoint that was uh, presented tonight be available for, uh, yeah. Or, or yes, here. it's already been uploaded to the website, the, which the link was um, that bit.ly link given in the presentation, and I believe we could put that up on the on the screen. So if That's you scroll correct. down, if you go to that page, scroll down to the public meeting, and then on the attachments or documents, you can download the slides. And it's okay to. Uh... Oh, you can download. Okay, great. I, I will put that on our website, the Total Lead Alliance website. So that oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. And it, are we going to be able to like participate in uh, the hydraulic uh, study review, or or is this the the only public comment period right now? So um, right now we're in a general comment period. If if you want to participate at a higher level, as perhaps like a key stakeholder. Um, I'd be open to that and, and we could get you added to that list. So you'd be more be more involved than say the general public, but um, um, I think we could do that, right? Yeah, that would, that would be great. I'm, I'm also been recently appointed uh, to the Marana uh, Utilities Board, uh, which is, you know, water and wastewater. So I, I do have a, a connection an official job, I guess, volunteer job with the town of Marana. So um, I wear several hats here, even though I'm retired. <laughs> well, very good. Yeah, so uh, we'd be happy to get uh, input from you and with your expertise and background and your connections. So yeah, please yeah. add me to that key uh, stakeholder list. Thank you. Yeah, we will. Thank you, Mark. So we do have um, a question in the Q&A box. So I'm gonna go ahead and read that out loud. Uh, there's a question from Ron Green. Is this in regard to future development on one particular side of I-10 or both sides? All right, yeah, good question. So this, um, this plan is, is not being started or done for any particular future development. Um, so there was no, uh, you know, there was no particular development that happened that that caused the study to be uh, 
to be started, if, if that's what you're asking. Thank you, Chris. So as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, you can go ahead and submit it in a Q&A box, or you can give us that raised hand signal. You will see it next to your name under the participant panel. Um, in addition, if you are calling in, if you're a call-in only user, you can actually give us that raised hand if you'd like to ask a question by pressing star three on your phone. We'll just give folks a few minutes if you'd like to submit a question or raise your hand. I guess while we're waiting to see if there's any other questions, um, I can answer one that I that I received several times by phone call. So some people asked me if this study would affect the FEMA floodplain maps or flood insurance. And so the answer is no. Uh, this this watershed plan, uh, there's no intent. It's not scoped with the project to to revise the FEMA floodplain maps. So there, there should be no change. In, in that with this project. Thank you, Chris. And then um, another question that I got is, uh, when would we see any sort of projects come out of this watershed plan? And, and the answer to that kind of, it depends on, um, if we determine that there are viable or economically viable projects that can be built, and if there are um, projects that can be built, then the soonest we would possibly see anything is about five years from now. And that's assuming it's a great project and we can get the funding to do it and we can get the land to do it. Um, but most likely it would take longer. And uh, this is a long term uh, process. And so, uh, looks like we do have some other questions. Um, we don't have any additional qu questions, Chris. Um, if you do have another um, frequently asked question, um, we can go ahead and go over another one of those. Okay, yeah, sure. So another one I oh, received. So sorry, Whether... we just had a couple come in. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I do have a question from Robert Balch. What are current water flows in this area by season? And does this plan only address major flooding or seasonal as well? Okay, yeah, good question. So that the plan is, is addressing major flooding, um, but as part of the analysis, we may look at smaller storms. We're going to look at a range of, of storms from small to large um, to see because there may be projects that are economically viable only on the large scale or perhaps only on the small scale. So we're going to be looking at a range of, of, of flooding situations from small to large. Um, as far as your question on the on the flows, Alex, maybe you want to try and take that one? Uh, sure. Um, give me one sec here. One of the pull ups I can look at here. Uh, might have to look that up and get back to you because I don't know really what <laughs> the seasonality of the flows. Um, but I do know that we looked at um, what I mentioned before was a hundred year and a 500 year event. And, what that means is it, it doesn't mean an event that only happens every 100 years, but it's it's an event that has a 1% chance of happening any given year. Um, and of course, over a longer period of time, that probability or the chance of that happening goes up. Um, and then we did look at a 500 year event, a larger event, and that one has a 0.2% a chance of happening any given year. And of course, for a longer period, it has a greater chance of occurring. Um, 
but I, in terms of actual numbers, um, I, I can definitely probably get back to you in writing on that. So I can look those up because I don't know them off the top of my head. I yeah, and so for anybody that lives out here, you you know you have we have the monsoon season, which goes from John, uh, June fifteenth to September fifteenth, um, and then there's also the early winter and winter storm season, which is where we get kind of more like the hurricane activity, the the longer, uh, draw, more drawn out storms, um, and in fact the nineteen eighty three flood of record occurred in October, uh, which is within that that period. So we we do have two kind of distinct seasons uh but from a modeling perspective and a study perspective uh it, they we use um standardized methods for for modeling these storms and so it, it's not necessarily indicative of either season it's it's just a um an engineering standard hypothetical storm that that's modeled based on actual data and statistics from the area but it's not tailored to a particular season, so. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. So we do have another question. Um, this is from Jason Paz. Will this project affect any OHV recreation in the area, specifically state land trust? Okay, yeah, good question. So. Uh, as far as the study, the watershed plan, no, there will be no no effect on that. Now, uh, with any sort of resulting project, let's say we've come up with a you know a, a, a reservoir or some sort of large basin or a system of basins, um, we would have to work with the state land department to to locate those. And um, usually, when it comes to planning out structures like that, we have to make a accommodations for existing uses. Uh, so any trails would have to be relocated um, or could possibly in, be incorporated into um, the structures. So um, in, in that regard, it, it could have an effect, but it, it wouldn't like eliminate it. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Thanks, Chris. So at this time, we don't have any additional questions. Uh, maybe go over one of your other frequently asked questions in case people might have a couple more um, questions for you. Sure, yeah. So another question I received was if this is this study or the project going to affect their taxes, their property taxes. So, so the short answer is no. Um, so anybody that owns property in this watershed, at least on the Pinal County side, can't speak to Pima County side. They they pay a uh, part of their property tax pays for the flood control district, which is partially funding this study. Um, now, any resulting projects that come out of this watershed plan for construction would have to be funded by flood control district funds and hopefully uh, NRCS federal funds. And there has not been any uh, discussions or desires to raise taxes or anything like that. Um, at this time, so that, that hasn't been part of the discussion. We're, we're definitely focused on trying to get that those federal dollars of which you're already paying, getting those back to Arizona and back to, to as, as close to where you're, you know, to the watershed as possible. Thank you, Chris. So we do have another question that came through from Melanie McVicker. You mentioned coordination with Pima County. Do you know if the Pima County letter of map revision has yet to been submitted to FEMA? And how will this study interplay or be impacted if the revisions occur? Yeah, so uh, we, we have had several meetings with Pima County and I, I believe they said they were about to submit that matter, uh, letter of map revision. Or do they just did it? Do, do you remember, Alex? Um, I think they were just about to submit it. I'm not sure if they actually have yet. Okay. So, and we we are uh, reviewing their analysis and and right now and comparing it to to ours. I believe they used similar methods. Um, so, you know, I, I don't believe 
this will affect their map revision at all. They, they, they've gone through a pretty, pretty uh, robust process to get to the point of, of where they're at today, and we don't anticipate it changing. So I don't know, Alex, if you had anything else to say about that. No, no, I think you covered it well. I mean, like, like you said, they have recently uh, made some revisions to their modeling and their, their study does focus on the Santa Cruz itself and where our study is a little bit different is that we look at the, the watershed. So we look at flooding along the Santa Cruz and also flooding from the upper watershed. So um, two different purposes for the studies. And yeah, I don't foresee this study um, impacting that one at all, other than we would be reviewing it to try to give us a little bit more knowledge as to what, what they're seeing and try to integrate any of that into what we're doing. Yeah, good, good point. Thank you guys. Um, if you do have one additional FAQ, maybe we can go over that and then you can go ahead and wrap up the meeting at that time. Um, so I had, uh, let me open my spreadsheet here for a second. Cause um, yeah, so another question I received is, will this have any, you know, any effect on like groundwater and like, um, things like that. Uh, so the answer is possibly. So again, the primary focus of this project, this study is flood uh, prevention or flood mitigation. However, if, if we can find ways to address groundwater issues at the same time, say like building a big like a reservoir or large basins that can recharge the aquifer, then that's something definitely we want to do. Uh, but those, uh, but the groundwater, uh, issues has to be secondary to the primary purpose, uh, which, which again is flood mitigation and flood prevention. Thanks, Chris. So it doesn't look like we have any additional questions. So I think at this time we can go ahead and wrap up. All right, well, this concludes our uh, public scoping meeting for the Field Wash Santa Cruz River Watershed. Uh, thank you again for, particip for participating and joining us on this call, and we look forward to your feedback and, and comments.